So here's the five things that I like about this lathe. Uh, I kind of touched on this as well, um, whether a tail stock or a sub spindle, and I I've really struggled with which one I wish I had the most, but I really do like the programmable tail stock because <clears throat> if I am running uh, a part that I need a tail stock, I can do a short push, machine that at where it's the most rigid, and then push it, and then do a, a tail stock um, advance, and it just supports it for, through the whole way. So I can basically do a long part with short pushes to get the whole part um, machine like I need to support it the most or the best way we can and I can do it all from the VPS. One of the things that I, I really like about Haas and the lathe is the, the YouTube videos that you can find just about how to do anything. Again, I have not been trained. I learned a lot of this from YouTube uh, and I, I did become friends with a few people that have a Haas that I could bounce some ideas off of. Um, your local community college is a great resource if they have Haases, which most of them do. So that's one thing that I really like about, um, about the lathe and, and having the resource for learning how to do something. Another thing that I really like about Haas and, and this lathe is I like the interface. It's super easy to navigate. It's uh, pretty intuitive. You just go through the menus. If, um, since we're a job shop, we could just need to face something real quick. So that makes it really easy using the VPS for me to um, just do a quick VPS program to face something, for instance, or to turn a short piece down to a certain diameter. Super easy, very intuitive. Um, I really, I really like that about this machine. As I said before, I love the large through bore on this machine. It has allowed me to do jobs that I would not have been able to do if uh, if I had a smaller bore. So I really like that. Again, like I mentioned before, there's a sacrifice. Yes, I can turn something big but I really have to struggle to turn something that's like a quarter inch. I try not to turn anything smaller than like half an inch, if at all possible, on this machine, but that's kind of the give or take of the situation. I said this before as well, I really like the Y axis on this machine. It takes the, the guesswork about or the guesswork of having to do another op on a different machine. I am literally able to uh, do a complete part, even if I have to uh, drill from, the, from uh, the radial side and tap, and it just makes my life so much easier. I love how, uh, the, the live tooling is actually quieter than the main spindle. Um, the main spindle is pretty loud, but it, I don't really care about that. It's, it is what it is. I, I, I just don't care about it. But I love the sound of the, the live tooling as it's milling apart in there. Granted, it's not a mill. Uh, we don't use it like that, but if you, if you, if you have a mill or don't have a fourth axis on your mill, this is the next best thing and it's phenomenal. I really like the bar feeder as well. We're not a production shop. Like I said, we're a, um, we're a job shop, but that doesn't mean that we won't run 50 to 500 parts. Being able to put um, a bunch of stock in the, in the bar feeder and just have it auto feed, it makes our life a lot easier. We don't have to sit there and watch through the window make sure it's feeding right. Um, it, it just makes our life easier. There, there's really not an easier way to say it. In the VPS, we can set the, the bar push and it'll just make parts. 
So if we were a production shop, then it would be running the same part, shoot, all day, every day. But like I said, we're, we're a job shop, but when we have to run 50 to 500 parts, it's a lifesaver.